to start today. I'm throwing a small crappie jig, chartreuse avocado. It's a 1 16th ounce with a one, uh, small split shot. And then further up the line, about two and a half feet, is a small jigging float. And the way I'm gonna fish with my new red bone, because we've been together for almost two weeks now, and she does wander off, so I can't have her on the leash. Got snossages, and her, she's on a tree right next to me. If she starts digging again, we'll have it made. Maybe, maybe not. Dixie. I know some of you find it ridiculous to fish with the sun in your eyes, but that's why we wear sunglasses, right? The whole thing about casting into the sun is that it's a more productive cast. When you're trailing away from the sun, fish are more likely to follow that than something into the sun. Because it's like, why would you run right into an oncoming train with the light in your eyes? I always find that I'm much more productive in the evening when I'm fishing towards the sun with it in my, my eyes. But it won't be there long because it is setting. All right, let's take our first cast here. It doesn't have to be far. And we're just gonna retrieve it slow. Now, I'm in City Park and there, there is quite a bit of growth in certain parts of the park, but over where Dixie and I are, it's not too bad. our first candidate. She's calmed down enough to stand by my side. She is attached to my hip though, but she's looking at this fish. Hey! <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've tortured him enough. See you later. Get big, little bass. Hey, he's up there, heel. She's got me wrapped around. She wants to go after <clears throat> the fish I just put out there. This is our third little fish of the evening. The more I catch, the more interested she is in what I'm doing. She just will sit at the edge of the water, watch me cast, watch me retrieve, and then gets real excited when one of these little things is on. All right? Go, Dixie. There it is. It's my first yellow bass of the evening. My dog is wrapped around my legs. She's having a hard time getting it. Wanna kiss it? Not with your teeth. <laughs> Alright. I did bring the ice chest, so I am gonna keep guys fishing over here next to me. I think it's Arbor Day. He keeps catching trees. Uh, actually you're not supposed to catch trees on Arbor Day, right? You're supposed to plant them. Let them go. So I'm going to let this one go. It's dizzy now. Well, the fishing slowed down. They didn't catch a fish and she started to get bored. Sit. Oh, it's a snossage. Well, this is turning out to be a nice multi-species session here. With a nice sunset. That's a I believe this is our fourth largemouth bass. Get it. Alright. Again, not really big, but very fun. Wow. About five feet in front of Dixie. This one hit. It's the biggest one we've got all day. I'm going to show them off pro proper. <laughs> Alright, he's not, you know, <clears throat> the biggest bass you've ever seen. But he hit really nice and he was a lot of fun and he's got Miss Dixie excited. Yeah. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on here, the method. We're going to let him go. Whoop. 
so as you may know by now, because I, I told you earlier, I am fishing with a, a jigging cork, and I have about two and a half to three feet underneath it. I, I'm still using split shot, though the wind has died down, but I, I'm still using it. So in front of us, about five to ten feet, give or take, is a weed bed, a bed of vegetation underneath the water. I know because I keep pulling back little bits every now and then. Other guys have come here and fished next to me and, and didn't do very good and kept pulling back just tons of vegetation. That's because they were pretty much skipping the bottom. Now I'm just coming right on top of that because I'm using a jigging float. I'm kind of bouncing in and out of the vegetation and that's where these large mouth are. Thought it was worth pointing out. So maybe sometime try using a jigging float to uh, fish a wheat bed. That right takes All right, see you next time.